Hi and welcome back. So countries where English is the official language do have a lot in common. This is mainly due to their shared British colonial past. But a new study has found that life expectancy varies greatly between these algophonic nations. What's more, one nation in particular appears to stand head and shoulders above the rest when it comes to life expectancy. Presumably thanks to their superior healthcare system and their comparatively few deaths from drugs and firearms. And I'm guessing, you're guessing, we're probably not talking about America. Population health scientist Rachel Wilkie from the University of Southern California and demographer Jessica Ho from the Pennsylvania State University teamed up to create a detailed picture of life expectancy in high income English speaking countries so they can learn what might be giving the best countries their edge when it comes to longevity. The pair wrote, life expectancy in high income countries indicates the frontiers of what is attainable in context with the high standards of living and ample resources directed towards improving health and also well-being. They compared data from 1990 to 2018 on six high income countries where English is the main language. And there are links in the description below to the studies and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. These countries were the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, the Republic of Ireland, Australia and also New Zealand. Data was drawn from the World Health Organization's mortality database and each country's vital statistics agencies. For regional comparison, information on non-English speaking countries was included from the Human Mortality Database. The authors stated that these countries share a common language and some cultural similarities, e.g. diet and lifestyle, as well as current and historical high levels of income inequality. That said, their study found that these similarities didn't mean that their citizens can necessarily expect to enjoy similar lengthy lifespans. They assessed life expectancy at birth and at the age of 65, how life expectancy is affected by age and cause of death in the different countries. Also, how widely each country's life expectancy varied within their own geographic regions. Australia performed best across the board compared to all the other countries with lower mortality rates for both men and women at nearly all ages, especially for those aged between 45 and 84. The researchers wrote in their paper that Australia is the best performer in life expectancy at birth, leading its peer countries by 1.26 to 3.95 years for women and by 0.97 to 4.88 years for men, and that was in 2018. The study found that Australia had a particular advantage over other countries when it came to deaths from circulatory and respiratory diseases, cancers, perinatal and congenital conditions. Also when it came to mental and nervous system diseases like Alzheimer's. This was especially true for Australian men. The authors noted that the reduced risk of death from these conditions was linked to their superior healthcare system performance. Things like cancer screening and then treatment, influenza vaccination and cardiovascular disease prevention, as well as the diagnosis and then the subsequent treatment of these conditions. This was supplemented by Australia's lower mortality rates when it comes to both firearms and drug overdoses. This when compared to other countries on the list. Canada, which is also known for its quality healthcare system, had the second highest level of life expectancy of birth. And this was between the years 1990 and 2019. This may seem like a strange request, but if you're enjoying the video and you'd like to do me a solid, there's no need to give it a thumbs up. There's no need to subscribe. If you want to help, please share it and anywhere is fine. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, X, even Rumble, really anywhere is fine. Back to the video. Sticking with life expectancy at birth, New Zealand and Ireland have both caught up quite considerably with Canada. In fact, things are really looking up on the Emerald Isle. Across the years analysed, life expectancy at birth in Ireland increased by 8.29 years for men and 6.66 years for women. The Republic of Ireland, not to be confused with Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom, experienced remarkable life expectancy gains between the years 1990 and 2018. This is according to the study. Initially, Irish men and women had the lowest or second lowest life expectancy among the six countries that were studied. But by 2019, they ranked second for men and third 
for women. When the data was broken down into geographic regions, both the UK and Ireland had very little variation. Life expectancy was about the same, regardless of where you live in these countries. Australia also did well with regard to this, except for the Northern Territory. This population has a high proportion of Aboriginal Australians who are known to have shorter life expectancies, especially in remote areas like the Northern Territory. This is because they face certain issues that, as First Nation peoples, are disproportionately higher than the norm. Issues such as higher rates of disease burden. The study authors wrote that, notably, sizable mortality inequalities across socioeconomic status and geographic region exist within most of these countries and have tended to widen in recent decades. The United States has the lowest life expectancy of birth for every year since 2001 and similarly finished last in the rank for life expectancy at the age of 65. Based on the data from 2019, Australian men at birth can expect to live nearly five years longer than their peers in the United States. The authors noted that overall, Australia offers a potential model for lower performing Anglophone countries, such as the USA and the UK, to follow to reduce both premature mortality and inequalities in life expectancy. The authors listed one major limitation to their study, and that being the potential differences in cause of death coding across the countries and the lack of data availability for smaller subnational geographic units. So let me know what you think. Are you surprised that overall the USA is bottom of the list? Do you consider yourself part of the general population in your country? Or like me, are you trying to extend your health span and possibly your lifespan to become what is classed as an outlier? And did you watch my last video about Russell Crowe? He's an Australian living in Australia, but who I think because of his lifestyle may not be in the top bracket for life expectancy in Australia. 